Thanks for tuning in guys, Pest and Lawn Jija, and this is What's Wrong With My Lawn. Now if you're new to my segment of What's Wrong With My Lawn, What's Wrong With My Lawn was designed to teach you at home how to diagnose your own lawn. Now we're going to go through my five step approach, which handles identifying color, pattern, water saturation, a debris test, and a pull test. Now each one of these items kind of piggybacks off of each other and tells us what's happening and what's not happening to the lawn to give us our final conclusion. But let's get started. All right, Dave, so let's, let's take a walk. Overall, what we want to do is we want to figure out is this an even distributed problem, meaning it's uniform, or if we have random problems through the lawn. Now, when I'm going through the lawn, as far as I can tell, we've actually got a pretty uniform issue happening where the entire lawn, it's, it's almost like a dingy, just kind of hazy. It's got some, a, a little bit of yellow kind of yeah. tracing through the lawn. Um, the fact that it's not growing, that's kind of a concern because Kentucky bluegrass, it, it likes to boogie. Yeah. That's for sure. So color wise, I, you know, I give it that overall haze. Pattern wise, I, I would say that we're pretty, pretty uniform. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. I think we've got one spot in the middle over here that's a little bit worse than the others, but overall it seems like we're dealing with one solid problem. So the nice thing about your property is we can get up high to, to just triple check to see if I'm correct on that pattern issue. Um, Cause we, we want to be diagnosing several areas instead of one giant area, even on a uniform problem, just in case there are several issues. But I mean, walking through the lawn, it, it feels okay, but it just doesn't look right. Yeah. So kind of like my tooth from this week. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad day, bad tooth day. So pattern wise, we've established that we have a uniform pattern with a possible random issue in the middle of the lawn, but for the most part, it's happening through the entire backyard. Color wise, we're really going to get into the lawn and you can see it's just not the type of green that we'd like to see out of Kentucky bluegrass. They call it bluegrass because it typically has kind of a blue tinge to it. Now when we get into the lawn on the close up, you can see that there's a little bit of a gray matter traveling right on the soil surface. You can also see that the lawn has a fungus called melting out. The color pattern is very important. Not only do we want to look at the overall color of the lawn, but we also want to look at the blades of the grass. Now this is a pretty common fungus for Kentucky bluegrass specifically, but I have seen it in some fescue lawns as well. What it does, it starts restricting growth. Now this type of fungus could have started from overwatering in one area of the lawn and every time you mow, those fungal spores spread. Step number three is the water saturation test. Now the point of this test is to see how much water we have in the soil. Ideally, we wanna see about six to eight inches of water that's not oversaturated, but is also not dry. We want the perfect level reservoir. Now the reason why we want six to eight inches is for those roots to actually not only chase, but to have an adequate access of water. I really love my AMS soil probe because it allows me to see what's going on in the soil and it pulls a plug. And you can see I'm going to be plugging several areas throughout the lawn. The reason why I do this is to make sure that we have even distribution of sprinkler coverage. It can adequately find areas that are being overwatered and underwatered and I get a good visual. Now if the soil is soaking wet and my probe sinks further than that, we've got a little bit too much water and too much water can actually cause a melting out fungus. If we have too little water, you're going to see the Kentucky bluegrass try to protect itself and go dormant. So we don't want that either because then it's going to form a brown haze across the lawn. Now I want to talk a little bit about the uh, water saturation test that we did. Now we're finding some interesting things happening with the plugs. The clay is actually in layers. So we have clay layer here, which is comes from the sod. And then this is his native soil. And you can see we've got some decomposition happening and stuff like this doesn't bother me. It's more uh, just gravel and just sediment. And that is really, really normal and really common. Um, but this layering from the actual sod is what's kind of the, the pisser offer, if you will. Connor Ward, pisser offer, go check out his channel. Best channel ever. 
Um, but this, this right here is what's causing the problems. This clay is so thick and dense, you can see the thatch just isn't, is starting to get away from it. And there's no more dirt in here. And it's starting to grow the wrong way. Top layer, having that clay so hard and so compact is making it very difficult for the thatch to grow the proper way, but it's also making it so the water is not getting through in evaporation and getting down into the soil properly either. So we're gonna have to talk about the fix for this. Now, like so many of you guys out there, Dave was really stuck on the fact that he's turning the water on and visually it looks like there's water getting on the lawn. And he really didn't want to let go that the soil probe was physically showing us that there was no water in the soil. So Super Dave here already had the water cups that I really like. I already ordered them off of Amazon. Man, you, yeah. you actually watch what I do. I'm yeah. kind of impressed. Yeah. So the one thing that I want to let you guys know is we put these cups in a grid. Some in the good areas, some in the bad areas. We ran a 20 minute cycle to make sure that we have proper coverage. Now we're also going to fi be figuring out our water output. We want the average of each one of these cups so if we find that the average is 0.25 in 20 minutes, we're not going to add up each individual cup. We're taking the average of the cups. So the average would be 0.25, but let's go see what our results have. This is after 20 minutes. I expect this one to be a little bit high, but we'll see. And we've only got hardly, I don't know, 0.1 is all. That kind of shocks me. So let's put that back in place. We're going to check the other one. Let's grab this one. No. I want to see how well these are. This one is also at the bottom hash. <laughs> so those two are actually pretty even. I'm trying to figure out if that's 0.1. Yeah, it's 0.1. Pretty low flow, yeah. actually. So we're in a little bit of a doozer now. We're gonna go over to these cups. Now these cups were kind of special because they got hit by two separate sprinklers. We got hit by this section and we got hit by this section. And I'm not too sure what we're gonna find here, Dave. But, oh my gosh, Dave, we have next to nothing in that cup. That it's, it's less than half. Yeah. There's next to nothing in that cup so we'll check this one out which this is our problem area cup <laughs> here's reality dave there's nothing in this cup it's again it's 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 maybe 0.01 yeah let's check that out it's fascinating right yep so it's almost a shocker but your output is very similar to my mp rotators and my MP rotators are doing about 0.1 of an inch. And this one, we're back to 0.1 of an inch again. Amazing, so what I'm doing right now is 75 minutes. Yeah, so you're doing 75. Per three times a week. Three times a week. So we're a full day behind and 75 minutes per week behind. Yeah. So it's it's pretty crazy if you think about it that way. Yeah. Now it's almost shocking because if I, if I were a betting man, you were pretty convinced that this area had zero watering problems. Yeah. I mean, I would yeah, and, and that's just reality. And that's why you got to get the cups because then you know what reality is and then you know how to slay it. But you can't slay a lawn when you're feeling like it's getting good coverage. Stop feeling good and start getting the facts. Yeah. Step number four is the debris test. Now, the reason why we do this is because if we get too much debris, the lawn gets choked out. Now, I like to use a thatch rake, but you at home, if you don't have one or if you don't have the funds to get one, you can just part the grass, pinch out the debris from the soil surface to see how much you actually have. Okay, so let's talk about the debris test. Now, there's a couple of things we found. All in all, hardly any debris totally manageable, everything looks fine. The cause for concern here is it looks like you just put in sod. Yep, last fall. Last fall. <laughs> so, well, about that. Yeah. So you've got some lines that are like open. Yep. Big time. 
And this is common when the landscapers, and I don't want to speak for the person that did it because I wasn't here, a lot of times they get to the end of the job and they get a little lazy, so you get a chunk like you did because yeah. they either didn't want to buy another pallet, so they space it out a little bit, but it causes a big issue. Now, the fix for that is to grab some sand. Um, you can cut the bottom of a two liter bottle off, put the sand in there and then undo the cap. You can literally just trace the sand in there or you can take a, a wide mouth shovel like I have and just throw the sand down and then smooth it out okay. with a level on or you can get some sort of a, a drag material yeah. to just level it out. So the other cause for concern is the uh, this area that we have over here that appears to be dry. Yeah. Um, we know from the soil probe it could use about 20% more water, but looking at the plug itself, that plug is like pure clay. Like it's hard, it's compact. If I were a betting man, I'm betting the water's just kind of pooling there. Yeah, when... I mean, it, it runs off from there. So if you put a hose to it, it just runs off of there. This is where we want to get a device like the Sunjo and we want to use the scarifier, not the dethatcher. Now what that's going to do is we're going to cut grooves through the thatch. Um, that will allow more oxygen, water, and minerals, but it also allows us to use a liquid aeration tool like the liquid aerate that you guys get from Next. Fantastic product. That's going to be the best bet is to scarify it a couple of times and then use that liquid on top of it. Okay. Step number five is the pull test. Now, how we accomplish this is we grab our bear claws and not our crabby pincher fingers, and we grab a significant amount of grass and we tug on it. Now, the pull test is a very important part of the process because it's going to tell us if the roots are intact or if they're not intact. Now, if the grass were to come out, then I'd be searching for bugs, roundworms, cutworms, uh, cranberry girdlers, and forms of grubs are on fire right now in my state. So I'm constantly looking for it. Luckily for us, and this pull test came back clean, nothing is coming up. Now, the other issue is sometimes when you get a pull test, it's due to fungal matter. So we've gone through my five steps, so we're just gonna kind of chat about that. So number one, we're dealing with an overall uniform issue. Yeah. We do have a few random spots where your watering is just off. Overall, we're about 20% to 30% not enough water. So okay. we wanna bump those numbers up. And we're gonna, so once you actually daily watering for about 45 minutes a day for the next five days, just catch it up. Yeah. That should cause most of these areas to kind of come back. Now we have a full separate issue where at one point you were overwatering and we've got a melting out fungus. Now where that started in the lawn, I don't know, but every single time you mow, it kind of moves with you. So normally I would tell you to slightly dehydrate the lawn, but you've already done that. <laughs> we're kind of that point where it's already been slightly dehydrated. So now we want to push some fertilizer growth in it like the Propete 1704. We want to go a little bit higher. We want to hit one pound of nitrogen. And to do that, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is take the number 100, which represents one pound of nitrogen, and divide it by the bag number. So if we were at uh, that 1704, we'll just use the good old calculator so I don't mess this up. But if we divide that by 17, that tells us how many pounds of product you need per thousand square feet. And in this instance, it's 5.88 pounds per thousand square feet. And you could just up, uh, you know, do that at six, six. Yeah. just to keep it simple. Now, the other plan of action is, is the biggest thing is that the color test showed us we have that melting out disease. Causation isn't the fungus. Causation is that thick layer of clay that, clay that we have. And that is going to be difficult to deal with. So we're gonna need spring and fall aeration. And then you've actually purchased a Sunjo. I have. <laughs> it's very exciting. Yeah. So I don't really care about the dethatcher in this instance. The dethatcher is nice because we can increase color. The repair is actually using the scarifier, getting through that thatch, but we're really gonna be uprooting the clay as well. Okay. So it's gonna get a little bit messy, but it's not gonna be too bad to the point where you're just upset about it. Then we need to get some uh, liquid dethatch or some liquid aerate 
by next. All the links to the products will be in the description of the video to keep it simple. Um, but you're going to do that monthly. Okay. So I want you to scarify it every other month, but I want you to put that uh, liquid aerate and the liquid dethatch down monthly. Okay at the higher rate on the bottle. Now that's gonna help us condition the clay. It's not gonna get rid of the clay, but it's gonna open the clay particles so water passes. Okay. And that's how we're gonna keep it simple. <laughs> and then you've already got a company doing the fertilizer. I really wish you'd come over to the all green side, but <laughs> Next year. unfortunately he signed one of those <laughs> contract deals that we can't get out of, right? Well, Dave, this concludes this episode of What's Wrong With My Lawn. Who would have thought it was that clay layer and slight lack of water that was causing all the dysfunction? But guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up in the comments down below. You know I'd love to help you guys out. Till the next time, guys, this is the Pest and Lawn Jijo. We're slaying lawn. Oh. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs>